Sometimes we knit or crochet projects that we think are just pretty, and that is wonderful. But sometimes our projects hold a deeper meaning. When I was nine years old, my parents took me to Hawaii. And coming from the cold, rainy weather of Juneau, Alaska, Hawaii was an absolute paradise. I loved the sunshine and the soft breezes and swimming in the ocean. And then years later, when Tim and I decided to get married, just the two of us took off to Maui for our wedding and honeymoon and it was absolutely magical. We went zip lining, we went whale watching, we got married on the beach at sunset. It was perfection. And today's pattern brings back all of those memories for me because it's named Makani, which is a Hawaiian name for breeze or wind. Makani was designed by Elizabeth Carr and it's a beautiful summer cover-up that is a very quick and simple to make. It is wonderful to slip on over your swimsuit or even over shorts and a tank top for all of your summer outings. It'll give you a little bit of coverage while still being super breezy and flowy because it consists of a nice open lacy stitch pattern. And this pattern is actually two in one depending on how you seam it. So you can seam just the back and leave the front open. You can seam the back and the front, leaving just the neck open, so it's totally up to you. And you can wear it with or without a belt, so you have a lot of options. To make this, you're going to need five colors of sport weight yarn. We opted for our hand-dyed Yak Merino Sport, which is a buttery soft blend that contains yak fiber. If you would love to win five skeins of this yarn, just make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and comment below letting me know if you have ever worked with yak fiber before. You can download this pattern as well as get the yarn at expressionfiberarts.com. And while you're there, go ahead and sign up for email updates for weekly free knit and crochet patterns. Makani is very straightforward. It just uses basic stitches and I recommend it even if you are fairly new to crochet. I'll be showing you how to make it today, so practice along with me and you will see how easy it is. So here's how you make the stitch pattern for this design. We're going to start with some foundation double crochets. I'm going to work 17 for my small swatch. You'll have many more for the actual piece. So go ahead and work your slip knot and we're going to start with a chain two. And then go ahead and yarn over and insert your hook into that first chain you worked. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through one to create a chain. And then we're going to create our double crochet by yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So there's your first double crochet. Then to create your subsequent ones, you're going to yarn over, turn your piece to the side, and this most recent chain that you worked, you're going to work under both legs of that. So insert your hook into both legs, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then repeat what we did before. Yarn over and create a chain by pulling through one. So there's our newest chain. Then create a double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's our second foundation double crochet. And you're just going to continue doing that same thing for however many foundation double crochets the pattern calls for. So create your chain, then create your double crochet. And then 17. For row one, we're going to turn and we're going to start with a chain two. Then you're going to work one double crochet into that first stitch. Then chain one, then you're going to work a double crochet three together. So to do that, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and when you have one, two, three, four loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops. So you've turned three double crochets into one stitch. Now you're going to repeat across your row, chain five, two, three, four, and five. You're going to skip one stitch, and then you're going to work that double crochet three together over the next three stitches. So skip this one, and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Essentially, you're starting your double crochets in each of those next three stitches, but not finishing them. So you can see, and then yarn over and pull through all four loops. And continue repeating that across till you have one stitch left. Two, three, four, five. Skip one, double crochet three together over the next three stitches. And then again, one, two, three, four, and five. 
skip one and double crochet three together over those next three stitches. And when you get all the way down to the end of your row, you're going to chain one and just work one double crochet into that final stitch. For row two, we're going to start with a chain seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to turn, of course, and we're going to go ahead and skip over to this chain five space and we're going to work a single crochet into that middle third chain. Single crochet. Then repeat across your row, chain five, three, four, five. Skip over and make a single crochet into the center third chain of this next chain five space. And just continue repeating that along. One, two, three, four, five. Jump over to the third chain of that next chain five space. Work a single crochet. And when you get to the end of your row, just go ahead and work a chain seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. Then you're just going to jump over and you're going to single crochet into that final stitch. For row three, we're going to turn and we're going to slip stitch into each of the first four chains. So slip stitch into the first, into the second, into the third, and into the fourth, and then chain one and single crochet into the next chain. Then you're going to repeat across your row, chain five, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to jump over and you're going to single crochet into the center chain of this chain five space. One, two, three. And when you're working into these, you can work just into a single loop or you can work into two loops if you want a little bit more of a secure stitch. That's up to you. So continue repeating that across. Three, four, five. Jump over and into this next chain five space. One, two, three. Into that third chain. Go ahead and work your single crochet. So you're going to continue doing that until you get to the end. And you're going to finish with a chain five, three, four, five. And single crochet into the third chain of the chain seven space. Then you're going to leave those remaining stitches over here unworked. For row four, we're going to start with a chain seven, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to turn and we're going to skip the first stitch and skip the first two chains. Then you're going to single crochet into the next chain. Then you're going to repeat across your row, chain five, three, four, five, and then you're going to jump over and you're going to make a single crochet into the center chain of the next chain five space. Single crochet and continue repeating that all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, jump over, one, two, three, single crochet into that third chain. And when you get to the end, you're going to finish with a chain seven, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip these final two chains and you're going to single crochet into that final stitch. For rows five and six, you're just going to repeat rows three and four. So I've gone ahead and repeated rows three and four again, and now let's move on to row seven. So we're going to start with a slip stitch into each of the first three chains. One, two, and three. Then you're going to chain two. Then you're going to work a double crochet into the next chain. Boop. And then three double crochets into the next chain. One, two, and three. Then you're going to repeat across your row, chain one, you're going to jump over and we're going to make three double crochets into this center chain here. One, two, three. So continue repeating that. Chain one, jump over to your next chain five space and into the third chain you're going to work three double crochets. One, two, 
three, chain one, one, two, three, three double crochets again, one, two, and three, and we are on our final chain. So you're gonna work a double crochet into the next chain, and then you're just gonna leave the remaining three chains unworked. For row eight, we're gonna turn and start with a chain two. You're gonna work a double crochet into the first stitch, boop, boop, and one double crochet into each stitch, and into each chain all the way across to the end. So just make sure you're working into each stitch and those chains so that you end up with the correct stitch count. And when you get to the end, just go ahead and finish out with your final double crochet into that final stitch. Here's our little swatch. So you have this beautiful open lacy section here and our double crochets here. And you can see our double crochet three togethers are mimicked here by our three double crochets. So that is the stitch pattern for this design. You're just gonna repeat that to create the rectangles for your piece. And if you wanna make the optional belt, it's just single crochets. Once you're ready to seam up your piece, here's how you do that. You're gonna take your rectangles and you're gonna decide if you want to seam up both sides or just one side. You're gonna start by measuring the length. For our example, it was 76 inches, and you're gonna divide that in half, which is 38 inches. Then subtract six inches, which gives us 32 inches, and that is how far in you will seam from the outer edge. To seam your pieces, you can use whatever seaming method you prefer. For this, I just recommend a simple whip stitch. So here are our rectangles. You're gonna lay them right sides together, and you're gonna actually use the long tail that you left when making your pieces. I've gone ahead and threaded some scrap yarn in a different color onto a darning needle to make it easier for you to see. This is super simple. You are just gonna insert your needle under both legs of each of those first stitches to seam them up. Then go to the next stitch, insert under both legs of both stitches that are next, and there you go. Again, jump to the third stitch, so your needle is always coming toward you. And you want to make sure and keep these loose. You don't want to pull too tightly on your whip stitches or your edge will pucker up. So just continue all the way down. And when you get to the end, go ahead and finish your final stitch and then you can just weave in your ends. So I've gone ahead and pulled it a little bit tighter, but you wanna make sure it's still nice and stretchy. And then when you open it up to the right side, when you've worked it in your actual color, it'll blend in nicely and it makes a nice seam. And it is as easy as that. You'll have a beautiful summer cover up in no time. We hope you enjoy it. Enjoy this beautiful week and I will see you next week with another beautiful pattern.